This summer, I had the opportunity to visit three conferences. VidCon in Anaheim. Why do they have the, the green dot at the top? Because they're evil cancer. Open Sauce in San Francisco. Tom, Hamilton needs to know, are you gonna make Cuban? Yes. I'm gonna keep him accountable, so I'm just gonna do it. And LTX in Vancouver. I actually got to attend a fourth conference. That was a chemistry conference done by the Canadian Society of Chemistry, and that was also in Vancouver. I even got to hear a talk by Carolyn Bertozzi, one of the recent winners of the Nobel Prize in Chemistry for her work on click chemistry. As a chemist, I've attended lots of chemistry conferences before, but until this summer, I haven't ever been to a conference that didn't involve chemistry in some way, shape, or form. So this summer was an opportunity for me to do that, and it was enlightening to say the least. VidCon is a conference that I've been excited to go to for quite some time now, and some of the people I heard talk about it for the very first time were the hosts on Safety Third, specifically William Osman. Oh yeah, none of us Neither got invited to VidCon. So VidCon, and, and I'm only saying this because we didn't get invited, <laughs> it's a little bit different than it used to be. It used to be more creator-oriented, where there was, like, because it was started by Hank Green. Mm -hmm. yeah. who mm -hmm. made an event and like a thousand people showed up. Was it a thousand or a hundred? A thousand people showed up and it was essentially for creator. It grew into this event that was able to, you know, make money and pay for itself mm -hmm. by having fans and sponsors. I feel like they're not as in tune with what the creators who show up want from the event. According to the people on the Safety Third podcast, it just wasn't really meeting their expectations anymore. The last year was kind of the most, felt the most out of touch where it's like, oh, that spirit is sort of gone. It's fun because you never really get to see all these people in one yeah, place. Yeah, and I had a lot of fun. going there the first time was like, oh my God, mm -hmm. I miss that kind of stuff. Like in previous years, VidCon had gone pretty well, but it wasn't the same as it used to be. At least that's what they said. Now there's one other person that I'd talked to about VidCon ahead of time, and that's Kibitz. Kibitz has a YouTube channel called I'm Kibitz, where he does all sorts of factory games, he used to work on another channel called Kibitz and the Captain, where they made Minecraft IRL videos. It turns out, we've been friends for several years now. We decided to go to VidCon together, since neither of us had been yet, and we had a really awesome time. Kibitz and I do all sorts of stuff together, because we're actually friends in real life, which may be hard for you to believe. Angry factory guy and enthusiastic chemistry guy combined? I know, right? What are the chances? But seriously, Kibitz has been a really great friend, and he taught me a lot of the stuff that originally got me into YouTube. If you appreciate the videos that I put out, maybe you should go and show some appreciation to Kibitz as well for his help on getting me started. I definitely see Kibitz more than any other creator I know, and it just made sense that we would go to VidCon together, since we're friends. What wasn't super welcoming is the moment we got outside of the airport, there was a kid just peeing openly. So uh, yeah, that's great. This kid's parents were just letting him piss right on the sidewalk, and I guess that's LA for you. The night before VidCon, we decided to do a bit of networking, and we got to meet the head of security, Max. Max found out that I was a chemist, and he was very excited to ask me about the most dangerous chemicals I've worked with. What's the most dangerous test you've ever done? Uh, I've worked with hydrogen sulfide before. I've also like worked with cyanide and hydrazine done wolf kishner reductions and those like produce uh you know hydrazine as the reaction goes i was pretty excited to see what vidcon was all about since i'd heard mixed things about it and i wanted to come to a decision on my own about what it was actually like since people can't explore all of vidcon it's hard to know whether or not everything that people had to say was an accurate representation so we decided to see for ourselves now, if you've never heard of VidCon before, VidCon is a conference where fans can come meet creators that they follow, creators can talk to other creators, and they can also meet up with people from industry, such as people who sort out sponsorships, or companies who are affiliated with YouTube in other ways. So at VidCon in Anaheim, the way it essentially works is there is three different floors. The ground floor is the community track, the second floor is the creator track, and the top floor is the industry track. 
So this year for VidCon, I decided to get the industry pass because it sounded more interesting than most of the talks on the creator track. If you get an industry pass, you're able to go see events on the industry floor as well as the creator floor, and finally, the community floor. And for me, the most interesting stuff tended to be in the industry track. Since I'm a chemist, I'm used to chemistry conferences, I'm used to lectures and presentations about topics I find interesting. The community track was mostly an exhibition hall. There was a bunch of stores from different companies. There was also some panels and talks from creators, with a lot more seating than there was in the creator track. The things that were discussed in the panels for the community track tended to be more relevant for fans who are attending the conference, while the creator track tended to focus on stuff that was more relevant to early creators and people who had less experience with digital media. We were able to go to this one talk from John Green, which was pretty cool. John Green is an author, and he's one of the original founders of VidCon, along with Hank Green, who's recently diagnosed with cancer. Hank, if you're watching this, I hope you're doing well. The creator track also had a booth run by TikTok, where you could go in and hang out, talk to other creators, talk to people from TikTok, and find out how to make content better, if you're into making short-form content. Now, I would say that the majority of the creators at VidCon tended to be short-form creators, but there was still a lot of long-form creators there. You just had to find them. A lot of these booths were giving out free stuff where you could go and get, for instance, a TikTok keychain. Look at these. And a shoelace. What's on the shoelace? TikTok. There were some panels which were really good to listen to. This one panel from Matt, Pat, and Steph. I should probably look up the other creators of that panel. This was a panel called Creator to Creator with Sophia Nygaard, Tyler Williams, Matt Pat, as well as Stephanie Patrick. They had some really good advice for new creators. I'll just let you hear what they had to say. Management and they, part of their emphasis is like helping creators build teams. Um, I, think edit, I think editing is like nine times out of 10, your first and most important hire, because mm -hmm. that is work that is obviously very important to the video, but it's also very time intensive work, but it's also work that you know, I don't know if you're a trained editor yourself, but there are plenty of people out there who are very, very good at it. And even though I felt like I had a handle on our editing style that I created from the, the ground up, I'm like, there are people who are so much better at this than me. Please, you all grow together, which is great. It's interesting because it's almost like a version, like, like sort of not jokingly of like a content house, right? It's like, I, it's, honestly, it's, no, like it is. it's like almost like the collaborative approach seems like a, a really more, like there's a community and there's other people doing it. And I think that's could be what is going to motivate people. And I think that's something we should all encourage, not like treat this like there's like insider secrets or there's like, you know, some secret sauce you can't share. Yeah, I, I totally agree. It, isolation is really hard in this industry, I think. Isolation, and isolation is, is the worst place to be. So it doesn't matter if all of your friends are on the internet, it, like, it really doesn't matter how you're communicating with them, but being attached to some network of individuals who are thinking about the same things you are is incredibly, incredibly valuable. I found what they had to say to be really motivational, inspiring for creators, and just general wholesome stuff. It was really great to hear what they had to say. It confirmed my suspicion that Matt, Pat, and Steph are really great people. It was a thrill seeing them, and I even got to talk to them briefly. And, uh, you might not know this, but Matt Pat now has a pair of That Chemist sunglasses. I bet right now he's sporting a pair of these, which I gave out to a lot of other people at VidCon, as well as at the Canadian Society of Chemistry conference. But I'm getting sidetracked. There was also some talks from LinkedIn. There was also a Q&A from Colin and Samir, where I got one of their papers from the published press, which is pretty cool. I would say I'm a casual Colin and Samir fan, but I appreciate the role that they play in the YouTube ecosystem. They had these wristbands at VidCon that kind of suck. They get really tight, and uh, I'm a bit OCD about that. Even after I took it off, it felt like I was wearing that wristband for a solid week. So, uh, thanks, VidCon. Look at how cool this is. This is incredible. The industry track had stuff that appealed more to the academic side of me, as there was experts talking about their experience in YouTube. This is the president of Mr. Beast. He was comparing the viewership of the Mr. Beast channel to a top 10 Netflix series. It was also a really good experience for business people to come and learn about how YouTube works. This one was the most expensive tier, but for me personally, that was where I found the most value. If I had to go to VidCon again, and I wasn't a featured creator, I would definitely take an industry pass, just because of the sheer value that it offered. Now there's a fourth major attraction at VidCon, and that's the Creator Hotel. To get into there, you need one of these special wristbands. This is a wristband somebody cut off after VidCon had ended. You can get these through a company that you work with or a manager if you have a brand manager. Now, I didn't know I needed to email someone months in advance, so unfortunately I didn't get one. 
Another cool thing that we did while we were at VidCon is we finally got to meet up with Nigel. Nigel's from the channel Nile Red, and he's one of the OG chemistry YouTubers. I've been talking to Nigel for a little over a year, and we decided to go out for faux together with his producer Reggie and his brother Corey. The same thing every year, yeah. so it's, it's cool. They let us know about the social that was going on at Tube Filter, where we got to meet a lot of other cool people, such as this guy who works for the Chicago Bulls. We got to meet someone who is working with Olivetol as an antagonist for the CB1 receptor, and so that was kind of cool. And I mean, look at this. There's people go-karting underneath you while you're having drinks. That's pretty cool. And uh, we had a lot of fun there. We're good. Let's go, Reggie. Let's go. 900? 900. You get nine? I'll buy your drink. That was definitely one of the highlights of VidCon for me. Reggie helps produce Nigel, Nigel Blue. Reggie helps produce Nile Blue, so make sure you go subscribe and show some love. They recently made a cookie entirely out of NIST reference materials, and that was a video that I found really interesting. On our way back, Kibitz and I got some food, and then it was time for day two of VidCon. As I was mentioning earlier, I gave out a whole bunch of glasses to promote the channel, and maybe, just maybe, if you find me at a conference in the future, I'll have a pair of sunglasses just for you. I only got a hundred of the yellow ones made, and those are all gone now, but I do still have some purple ones left, but I'm getting too ahead of myself. Back to VidCon. I got to meet up with some viewers from the channel, and we got to network with some short form creators, such as Isaiah. When we were at VidCon, Kibitz was like, there's no chance anyone will recognize me, and the very first opportunity we had to talk to other creators was at the Industry Mixer, where we met Steven. Steven was a viewer of Kibitz for quite some time, and he immediately recognized him, much to my delight, and much to Kibitz's surprise. So after VidCon was over, since Steven was local, we decided to go and visit Disneyland. Oh my gosh, we're going to Disney, let's go! Disney! Is this your first time? Since, like, two decades ago. I'm pretty stoked to see Disney. Uh, I think Cody will really like the Tatooine part. We'll see, we'll see. My expectations, zero. That's right, three adult men visiting Disneyland. Are you kidding me? It was perfect. We had such a great time. No kids, no wife, no extra shopping. We just got to do all the cool rides and talk about cool stuff the whole time. Mrs. Chemist was so jealous. And she keeps reminding me, you are supposed to take me. I don't even think this is water. If someone told me this is like corn syrup, I wouldn't be shocked. Yeah, this is so cool. Like even the lines are part of it. I had the chance to make Kibitz drink some suspiciously colored milk, and you better believe I took up the opportunity to do that. I also found out how they figure out the times for fast passes. Steven was explaining that from time to time, they hand a card to someone at the beginning of the line, and based on how long it takes for that card to reach the end of the line, they can determine approximately how long the line is. The key card will scan at the beginning of the ride, or at the beginning of the line, and then hand it to a person. So they calculate the difference between the two times, and say, hey, this is how long the line is now. That help make sure the line is calculated. Cool. I got a little bit spooked on one of the rides, and that was more or less it for Disney. Kibitz and I got to check out this one cool bar, and that was the end of our VidCon trip. So William Osman, one of the hosts of Safety Third, wasn't satisfied with the way VidCon is anymore, so he wanted to bring back the spirit of the older VidCons by creating Open Sauce, which is a maker fair where people were able to come and exhibit things that they've made in their garage, things that they've made at home, maybe things that they made for a YouTube channel, whether or not they create content, and it was also an opportunity for creators to network with one another. The mm. idea is it's, you know, it's mm. going to be a maker fair mm -hmm. and it's going to be kind of like a classic maker fair, but even worse because we'll be <laughs> in charge. Did you get and so they decided to make open sauce. Now, I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to make it to open sauce, but I reached out to my friend Zach Friedman, who I might be working with for an upcoming video. Zach does all sorts of cool 3D printing stuff, including a game he made called Hextraction. And so at open sauce, one of my responsibilities was to help Zach teach people how to play Hextraction. I don't have a 3D printer myself but I knew I would need to be able to do some 3D printing in order to make my own custom piece for Hextractions. So my friend Noah had a 3D printer. I asked him if he would be willing to help, and in no time, he was able to make me some base pieces, 
which I was able to convert into my very own custom Settlers of Catan piece, which I brought along with me to open source. So I keep talking about Hextraction. What is Hextraction? This is Hextraction, the 3D printed physics based board game for makers, modders, and masterminds. Lay down tiles that team with tricks, traps, and tiny technology to try and take your steel ball to the finish line. Oh! Let's go. Hextraction is absolutely free. Zach made us our very own Hexperts Pass so that we could distinguish ourselves from the other people at the conference. I'm officially a Hexpert. We set up our Hextraction booth in the exhibition hall, which was one of the sections at Open Source. If you want to know what it looks like, I've got this handy dandy map. We were located right about there. There's a whole lot of stuff on this map. In addition to the stuff put up by exhibitors, there was a whole bunch of other stuff that we could do. We taught so many people how to play Hextraction. I even got a chance to teach Ben from Applied Science. Zach is basically a 3D printing wizard, and I was really impressed by the game Hextraction. I think if I ever get a 3D printer myself, I'll be building my own custom pieces. If you're interested in checking out Hextraction or Zach Friedman's channel, I'll include a link to that down in the description. Now, I wasn't the only person helping out with Zach's booth. This is Spectre, and this is Theo. They were both a ton of fun to hang out with at Open Source. There were several other people involved. Zach and Brooke took us all out for dinner, and we got to meet a bunch of other creators there as well. I keep mentioning this exhibition. I was lucky enough to meet Cody's lab. I finally got a chance to talk to Tom from Explosions and Fire. And I also got a chance to talk to Drake, also known as Styro Pyro. Stare at the green dot. Where's the green dot? Right there. Oh. I also got to meet up with Fred, who's an active member of the That Chemist Discord. If you didn't know that we have a Discord, it's quite a happening place. We have all sorts of chemistry discussions, as well as non-chemistry discussions, and it's just a decent place to hang out on the internet. If you want to talk about chemistry online, there's no better place than the That Chemist Discord. If you're a viewer, you're welcome. I also got a chance to meet up with Ballerine, who's a patron, and also the resident meme lord of the That Chemist Discord. If you're interested in supporting the channel, you can do that by Patreon. I'll include a link to that in the video description if you're interested. There's also a bunch of really cool inventions that people made, and there's much better videos of those than this one, and I'll include some links to other vlogs about open source in the video description. There is a bunch of live robot fights, as well as power wheels, and a giant red Amogus. During open source, there was also some live events, such as a live version of the Safety Third podcast. Cody even had a chance to show what perfluorobutane sounds like. It's another one of those deep voice gases, kind of like sulfur hexafluoride. It's kind of interesting seeing the IRL chemistry crossover that you'd never expect to come to fruition. But there you go. Interesting things happen at conferences. And it doesn't destroy the ozone layer. Like every time you do that trick, another Australian dies. It's good. <laughs> Speaking of interesting things, Adam Savage gave a presentation all about gauge blocks and how units of measurement are primarily for collaborative purposes. <laughs> We also got to hear Nigel opine on his stance about how to make YouTube videos. In a panel with Dustin from Mr. Beast, along with Rene the Creator Liaison, Ren, and Todd who works for YouTube. Yeah, there's always, like, I do my best to find, but like, these videos all the way and nothing ever really good with the of mine. So it's always like a nightmare for you. Sometimes I do things where I really, I think it's perfect, and I think the editing of it, like, my plan made it so much worse. There were lots of panels going on, and I personally like this one with Nigel in it. For the creators, there was a creator lounge where your YouTube fanfics basically came true, but you didn't get to see them. It was a really good opportunity for me to talk to a lot of creators, and that was probably my favorite part of Open Source. Almost all of the people I got to talk to were incredible people, and that was a relief, because you never know how people are until you meet them in real life. Another person I met in the creator lounge was Dave, who works for YouTube. He was able to get me into the YouTube social, which was a place where I got to meet a lot of other cool people. I ran into Justin and his team from Thought Emporium. We also got to meet Matt Gray, and Tom and I had another chance to connect here. Now, if you're not familiar with Tom's channel, Explosions and Fire, or his other channel, Extractions and Ire, he's been working on synthesizing Cubane from scratch in his garage. 
Welcome back yet again to another episode of the Cubane series. A series where we're trying to make Cubane or like the 1-4 dicarboxylate from household materials. And I have some sins to confess here. This eventually caught the attention of Hamilton Morris. Even if, even if Hamilton from Hamilton's Pharmacopoeia is now subscribed to this channel. Who's a chemist who focuses on the discussion of drugs and psychoactive substances. I've actually been on Hamilton's podcast before, and I'll include a link to that in the description if you're interested. Was he drinking straight glyphosate? Well, the way the video is billed is it's like supposedly a Monsanto lobbyist who says like, it's so safe, I drink it. And then the journalist has a gotcha moment. He's like, well, I've got a glass oh. of it right here. Why don't you have a sip? And the guy says, I'm not stupid. I'm not going to drink it. And then everyone says like, oh, that's a corporate shill for you. Hamilton's been a supporter of Tom for quite some time now, and we all know he's going to make Cubane someday. He's going to do it, right? I'm pretty sure he's going to do it. There's at least like a 50% chance that Tom will do it. It's 50-50. Either he does it or he doesn't. So I had to help keep Tom accountable. Uh, fermentation. Tom, fermentation. Hamilton needs to know, are you going to make Cubane? Yes, I'm, I'm hard at work currently. I'm at the Cubane conference. Everyone keeps asking me about it and um, I hate them all. So. I'm going to keep him accountable, so he's going to do it. Ah. At the YouTube social, I happened to run into Nigel again. He was sitting next to William Osmond's mom who I immediately recognized. William Osman was one of the organizers of Open Source, and he's one of the hosts of the Safety Third podcast. I immediately recognized William's mom while she was talking to Nigel. She was wondering how I recognized her, and boy, that was the wrong question to ask. Ho oh, oh. ho. Hello. Hi. So which Santa would you like to sit with today? Oh, number three. No. <laughs> Santa three. How are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm pretty good. What's your name? Mia. Very nice name. It's nice to meet you. You too. What do you What do you want Whoa, for uh, What do you want for Christmas? Kind of want you. <laughs> I mean, nice. it might be possible. I don't know. Well, you're Santa. You can make anything happen. I have Santa has his limitations. What are your limitations, Santa? Um. <laughs> mostly. Oh my God, you're cute. Three. Number three. Okay, amazing. <laughs> so uh, this is rigged. <laughs> Hello. What's your name? My name's um, Penelope. It's a very nice name. What do you What do you want for Christmas? Honestly, I'm just here because I have like a thing for Santa. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's not really like a, I feel, you know. I feel like I'm having a flashback. <laughs> What's your name when you're not Santa? Uh, I mean, I'm always Santa. <laughs> you're always Santa. I can give you Santa for Christmas. Really? Yes. Okay, well, you know, um, maybe after this. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm working right now. Okay, there's yeah. no Mrs. Claus, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, she doesn't matter. Okay, sounds good. How did you feel about your experience with Santa today? I felt amazing about it. Uh, what was your favorite part and least favorite part? Um, my favorite part was meeting Sansa. My least favorite part was nothing because I love Santa. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the Safety Third podcast had a special episode where the hosts were all dressed up as mall Santas. Let's just say Nigel was quite a popular mall Santa. Nigel made a lot of friends in this video, and the last friend that he made was William Osmond's mom. Next sitter, please come on out. Hello. Oh, God. How My mom. <laughs> mom, what are you doing? Why, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> And can you point to which Santa you want to sit with? Santa no! Okay, amazing. <laughs> Santa number three! Wow. Oh, no. It's okay, we can sit on it like this. Yeah. What's your name? Liana. What's happening? Nice to meet you, Don't Lena. look. Don't look. I, can, I can promise and give anything. Okay, so I would like for my son to return my phone calls. Oh, that's impossible. Um, just, that's it? Yeah. I'll work on it. it. I can, All just, the other just, sitters have given him a kiss on the cheek, actually, so far. It's been That's a lie. A this is a this is a lying sense. It's been a, a kind of a. Oh, this, there you go. <laughs> no. There you go. No. I don't know, William. What do you think? So you just lost a few points. <laughs> Worth it. I can give you that. You can give me that. Okay. I, I'll do my best. Okay. I'm the the responsible Santa. Yeah. Can you get off his lap? <laughs> God, I've never wanted to be dead more in my life. I swear. You need to go subscribe to the Safety Third podcast because they're putting out bangers like this. This is the Nile Red video that you've always wanted that you never knew existed. So you better go watch this video right after this one. I'll include a link to the Mall Santa video in the video description as well. And you should probably subscribe to Nigel so that he doesn't kill me. This is definitely like peak content. If we were to rank this on a tier list, this is right into S tier. S for sheesh.
Now, all jokes aside, Will's mom was really nice to talk to, and she even had a pretty good story about how Will almost had the FBI called on him. It turned out that it wasn't actually Will's problem, it was one of the neighbors who the FBI was interested in, so he got off easy that time. I also had a chance to talk to Mehdi from Electroboom while I was at Open Source, and we realized that both of us would be attending LTX. We were running out of the yellow sunglasses, and the purple vat chemist sunglasses arrived just in time. I really want to thank Mrs. Chemist for all the work she put into fixing the label on these. Some of them were peeling off, and many hours of labor were spent fixing these. So thank you, Mrs. Chemist. And if you leave nice comments down below, she will definitely see them. I got to feel really special when I was attending LTX, because this time I was a featured creator. Do you know who else was a featured creator? Kibitz, me, and Steven all got to go to LTX together, which was pretty awesome. And guess what? The people running LTX even let me bring a plus one. So Mrs. Chemist was very happy to join us on this adventure. So I keep talking about LTX. What is LTX? LTX is an expo put on by LMG, Linus Media Group, who run the YouTube channel Linus Tech Tips. I've been a fan of Linus Tech Tips for quite some time, and you might have even noticed some of their merch in my past videos. LTX, also known as Linus Tech Expo, has several different attractions depending on the type of fan that you are. There's something called a Whale LAN, which is a massive event with lots of gaming going on. LTX had about 4,000 attendees, and the Whale LAN had 673 seats, which is enormous, which is why they call it a Whale LAN. I also had a chance to meet up with several mouth pipetters while I was at LTX, including one of our patrons, Lev. All of them, of course, got a pair of that chemist sunglasses. There was a lot of different companies who were presenting at LTX, such as Razer and Asus, and you could even build your own custom LTT screwdriver. Which is what I have right here. You can see why I chose the colors that I did. They also let us have this ultra mini screwdriver, which they called the stubby screwdriver. Another cool thing that they had at LTX was the Midway, which is essentially like carnival games for computer enthusiasts. Since Steven is a hardcore gamer, Steven was clearly gonna be testing his skills at all of the games that they had available here. You did it! Thank you, sir. Take your poison. You get two silver stones, you get a silver. CPU cornhole. Uh, you can get your card one. Yes. Okay. You can do it. No pressure. Uh, yeah. Oh! Oh! Steven did a really great job at every game we played. He even set the record for the motherboard house of cards, but he was the first one to play for the day. Three, two, one. Oh, no. Oh, no. Hands off! Hands off! I know. <laughs> oh, hey, uh, nice. You were at 110. Wow. Pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, nicely done. Nicely done. Yeah. Hey. Awesome. Hey. Nice. Thanks, guys. Yeah. We also had an opportunity to get all of our angries out by shooting at people from LTT, using a Nerf Blaster, of course. They also had one of those claw machines where you could get a banana for scale plushie if you won. The people ahead of us lost like a hundred times, and then this happened. Seven golden bananas that I can see. Oh, oh, oh. No one's gonna hit. Oh, oh, oh no way. Oh. Let's go. That's awesome. Woo! Besides the midway, there was a chance to do a case toss where you could throw a computer case as far as possible. In addition to the exposition and the midway, they had a live stage where there was panels and other events going on. I found this map. From our, from our contractor who did the setup behind the stage. I want to give a big shout out to the team from LMG who made it an absolutely awesome experience for everyone attending. I had a really awesome time and I have a lot of respect for what they did to pull this conference off. Curtis from LMG was able to get us some reserved seats for the WAN show, which is a podcast that's hosted on the LTT channel. Y'all are real know, It was one of those things where it was just like, is that Steven? And no. Is that Kibitz? I don't know who you're talking about. Who are you?
<laughs> no. Nope. Uh, this is from Menok. I can, can we actually go back to the crowd cam? Crowd cam. <laughs> hey, we really need to get a wave going in here. Yeah. If you guys could actually just go for alignment with my hands. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, okay, we're gonna practice so that we can do it during the show. So you guys gotta nail this now. And go! Another thing that was available for creators who were featured was the creator room, where we were able to network and get some refreshments. They also had a ton of merch for sale, and there was a massive line in front of the store the whole time we were there. This is just a small fraction of all of the inventory that they had available, but just look at all this. I also want to give a huge thank you to Nick Light, who let myself and the other creators in attendance get a whole bunch of free merch. So thanks, Nick. That was really awesome. I also had the opportunity, along with the other creators in attendance, to sign a keyboard that would be auctioned off for charity. At the end of the first day, there was also a creator dinner that LMG put on, where creators and some of the whales in attendance were able to eat together and have a bit more conversation. This is where I got to meet John. John was one of the five whales at LTX. Each of the whales in attendance had to pay $10,000 for their ticket, but they got this sweet PC that they got to take home afterwards that cost over $7,000. At LTX, I can tell you that our whales paid $10,000 for their tickets that include the PC. We have gone absolutely top of the freaking line. Tasteful. Also, that infinity mirror on the fan looks amazing. So for the people who had access to Whale Land at the convention, they were given assigned seating, and there was 673 seats in total, which is absolutely insane. That's a massive LAN. They had all sorts of games scheduled throughout the event that people were able to play together. Now, as I was mentioning, I got to meet John at the creator dinner. John wasn't only a fan of Linus from LTT, but he was a huge fan of Mehdi from the channel Electroboom, who I got to meet at Open Sauce before this. And Mehdi was also at the creator dinner. I asked John if he wanted to be shocked by Mehdi's wand. Mehdi is well known for this wand that he made, which is kind of like a taser, but not a real taser. It just hurts. It doesn't actually like knock you out. And so I asked Mehdi if he'd be willing to give John a shock. <laughs> And if you really want to get hurt, you have to shock yourself. See you <laughs> Press the button, hold the button, and then shock your other hand with it. Other arm or whatever. Happy! Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. yeah that, that's more painful. That's great. <laughs> John was absolutely ecstatic. You might even say electrostatic. This meeting with Maddie had a ton of potential. Hey, this is John C. Bell here at LTX. 2023 telling you that you should subscribe to that chemist now to wrap up ltx the creators were offered an opportunity to get a tour of the offices of linus media group so of course i took them up on this they were only expecting eight to ten people to show up but i think like 88 people showed up so they were a bit overwhelmed <laughs> that's a balloon this is definitely one of the moments of all time our group of people who were going to be getting a tour together went around and introduced each other uh, I do like gaming and like logistics and uh, management games like Satisfactory, City Skylines. Oh, so like I have played a ungodly amount of City Skylines. You've played a lot of Satisfactory. Yes, yeah. I do. Oh, oh, yeah, brother. So, so I'm in uh, animation science communication. Oh, that's really oh, cool. Nice. <laughs> nice. I, I do not have the patience for animation, but it's a really awesome part. I appreciate for that. We got to see Lewis Rossman. Right to repair. If it's yours, you bought it. You should be able to fix it, cause of course you should. Lewis in the back. Everybody knows. Yeah, everybody knows. Lewis Rossman. <laughs> right to repair. Let's go. Everybody knows who you are. for our right to repair. I'm Joey. I do chemistry videos, mostly chemistry tier lists, and okay. this is my lovely chemistry wife. Chemistry tier list. How does that work? Uh, we usually rank molecules based on what letter they start with. Is that yeah. Best, best molecule? Ooh. Oh, there's cool molecules. There's like ones with lots of nitrogens in them, and if you like touch them, they explode. So that's kind of cool. We all know the uh, best molecule is dopamine. Dopamine's pretty good. That is pretty yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's S tier? Yeah, uh, it was in C tier because cheese stimulates the release of dopamine, and cheese starts with a C. And the audience is like, are you serious, man? Like, well, I already love everything about that. That's Excellent. Cool. It sounds like a follow the scientific yeah. process. Very nice. Yeah, what's your channel again? I need to follow your I am now. that chemist. That chemist? Okay, well, that's happening. And I didn't catch your name? Oh, Douglas, DMS, I review headphones and audio stuff and speakers. Awesome. Nice. Douglas was a really great guy to talk to. Our guide for this tour was Nick Plouffe, who's a host on TechLinked 
and he's also one of the writers for LTT. Uh, a lot of our engineers come in and use all the tools and stuff because they have some stuff at Creator Warehouse, but nothing as big as like the Tormach or the giant laser or like the sandblaster or like a paint fume hood at the lab. And we keep a few here just in case the engineers need something, but we don't use those ones that much anymore. There's a couple farms nearby though, and man, it absolutely stunk when we went outside. Oh, that's great. It's basically uh, here all the way to Abbotsford. Right? Yeah. Oh, it's so like being on a dairy farm <laughs> yeah. all the time. Welcome, welcome to my, you know, morning misery as I show up some days. For my team, so. <laughs> Why is he you still the claim to keep the same? That's, that's the orange. Yeah. By the way, I have to mention, Nick had a pretty awesome tattoo, which wasn't caffeine. I like the so, THC tattoo, by the way. Thanks. It's awesome. I, ever, I always tell people it's caffeine to just avoid any weird conversation. They won't know the difference. <laughs> if you're wondering what those things on the roof are, those are supposed to absorb sound. They kept falling off because they're meant to go on walls, not ceilings, but they put them on the ceiling anyway. So uh, yeah, those do that because they're not supposed to do that. Yeah, it looks way bigger on camera. I don't feel bad about how small my set is now. Like a dozen computers here. They're nothing crazy like uh, 3600 X's and 2060 Supers or something like that, but it's enough to play one when I was giving the tours before, so it's kind of cool. You'd walk in and see yourself on the camera, like in the virtual set we've got built or whatever. Uh, it's off right now. It's over there. This is otherwise just accounting. Uh, I, the whole office is over here. That's Vaughn's office. That's when I was writing in here. Um, this was like, we had all our shelves set up, so the whole... Yeah, it feels like... I don't know, it's Colton's office now. He joined Disneyland, has dubbed the business area Disney, Disneyland for. Yeah, Taryn was in that room for yeah, a long time, but Taryn's gone now, so yeah. we turned it into a bigger space for more people. Just so that they have access to like every port that they possibly could need, just in a moment's instance, you know. That's kind of new. We only did that about a year ago now, I think. We're always running out of C stands. I totally understand. Yeah, yeah. There, there's a prompter remote. Yeah, so we I mean, I figured that yeah. out, but I didn't realize they were just. Yeah, no, that's... It was honestly pretty surreal seeing these sets in real life, because it's just a room, but on camera they look so, like, mystical. I don't know what it is about them, but seeing them in person was a unique experience to say the least. It's so scuffed up that that, you know, it doesn't matter, like, just the, you know, all those weird connectors. Then we just got a big box of screws. Uh, we try to keep a bunch of snacks on hand for people who are hungry. Um, if this is cable management at LMG, I don't feel so bad about mine anymore. <laughs> okay, everybody, three, two, one. Let's go, nurse! One, two, three. So again, I want to give a huge thank to Linus Media Group for having me as a featured creator at LTX. It was an experience I won't forget, and I got to make a lot of new connections that I really appreciated having the opportunity to make. It was also really great meeting up with viewers of the channel, as well as patrons, and I really enjoyed that. I specifically want to thank Curtis, who helped with some of the email conversation. I want to thank Colton, who invited me to attend as a creator. And I also want to thank Nick for giving us a tour of their offices. Now, I know you guys like tier lists, okay? So we'll quickly do a tier list. I think VidCon had its merits. It was a good opportunity to hear about how YouTube works from actual YouTube experts, people who are very large creators, such as Matt, Pat, Colin, and Samir, as well as the president of Mr. Beast. And it was a good opportunity to network with other professionals, creators, and just people in the space. So I would say that VidCon was probably an A tier, maybe an S tier, but we got food poisoning one day because we ate at this sketchy restaurant. So that, that's got to take it down a point at least. Now for open sauce, given that it was their first year, they've never done open sauce before, it was pretty well done. There were some hiccups in terms of the timing of the live presentations, 
there was only one bathroom for the people who are attending. There was porta potties outside, but you'd have to wait in the security line again if you went out to use them. So like that's probably got to put open sauce down to like a B tier, but the creator lounge is pretty sweet. And again, they were really good experiences. I had a really good time there and I can't complain too much. All three conferences were really good and I'd absolutely go back to all of them. And then for LTX, I was honored to be a featured creator at LTX. They treated the creators really, really well, and I would absolutely come back next year. I did get to make my own custom screwdriver at LTX, so I think that'll also have to put LTX right into A tier. Now, there was also that chemistry conference I mentioned earlier, the CSC. Chemistry starts with a C, so that one's going to have to go right into C tier. So hopefully you found this video informative. You should go check out that mall Santa video if you don't know what to watch next because, oh my gosh, seeing Nigel in that video, in that clip from the mall Santa video, you got to see Nigel do a couple funny things, but there's way more gold in that video, so you should absolutely watch it. I'll include links to all of the channels that I mentioned in this video in the description. And above all, I really want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day. I'm sorry, Nigel.